is black. Hello, we're here again. How's it going, guys? Uh, welcome to one more of our live lens mods. Uh, this is, we're doing a different lens, wider lens today. We're doing a Pentacon 29 millimeters. And before we get to that, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us. Second of all, thanks, Blake. I don't know if he's in the mirror. He's usually in the mirror. I might have to duck today. Yeah, okay. I can see the cursor on the top of the picture. I don't know why. Um, I see everybody on the stream is my family now. Amazing. Everybody on the chat. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank Blake for being here and for being such an important part of this channel in this advancement stage, all of these things that we're trying to achieve. Um, so I guess this is our opening uh, upload sample. Oh, that's something else. Earlier this morning, I was starting my classes at Langara College. So I'm teaching a course there. Uh, soon enough, my students will realize that I'm live streaming and I'll be like asking questions about their assignments right here. Uh, hope that does not happen. But yeah, okay. Last week, uh, I talked about the Panasonic S5, which I have right here. And hopefully we'll be looking at samples of our modified lens in this camera today. I still feel like I shot a feature film using it a lot, but I still feel there's a lot to be explored about this camera. Uh, there's anamorphic modes that I tried to cover on the stream and only to realize that there's way more modes than I thought of. So I'm working on that. And uh, what are those things in the bookcase? Which things in the bookcase? These ones? These games? Those are Settlers of Catan. Vazen <laughs> uh, 85. Look at this. Our framing is just amazing. Um, boss. Uh, hi, my lens looks bokeh horizontal too. Doesn't it have to be vertical? Yes, it does have to be vertical. Your taking lens is probably focused too close. Do you have focused picture? That is usually one of the issues. So try that. Uh, Sam B, which one would you recommend getting for Siri 35 or 50? Siri 35. This is a quick reply. <laughs> quick fire chat. Uh, I use an iPad and Kindle now. <laughs> no books here. Yeah, I, I've been using a Kindle since 2015. Those are just the books that I kind of have to like quick reference. Uh, so they're more still in page paper format. Hello to London. Uh, nice to see you here. Okay, uh, so today we're doing another anamorphic lens. We're doing this Pentacon 29mm 2.8, which is going to turn into roughly f4. And this is a wide angle, so we're going to be able to see more of our surroundings and at the same time achieve super close focus at 0 0.25 meters or just under a foot. And this creates a possibility of creating, of creates creating, of making very compelling shots um, where there's wide, a wide field of view, also narrow focus and close up focus. So that's very interesting. Are you adjusting this? this? Yeah. Camera. All right. Blake's doing it on the fly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we're going to be modifying this lens. Um, it's a process called anamorph faking. And it's something that I've been defending or advocating for in a little while. The last more than the last year or so I've shot a bunch of stuff in anamorph fake. And unless I tell you, you can't tell the difference. Um, it creates bokeh, it creates flares. We're going to be changing a spherical lens so there's no actual squeeze. You'll be cropping the footage to your aspect ratio. But it works so well that most of the audience can't tell the difference. 
Uh, so anamorph faking, I have a guide about it. I'm just gonna post the link on the chat. And if you're here today, you can get it for 20% off using the code. Use code for 20% off at checkout. So if you don't have the guide yet, you can definitely get it now for a discounted price. The discount's good until next week, uh, next Wednesday midnight. And also I'm gonna be giving away this lens, uh, not live, but in four weeks from now. So I'm gonna open uh, the giveaway on Instagram tomorrow. If you are not following me there, make sure to do so. Instagram.com slash anamorphic on a budget. Um, so you can get the post and follow the rules to get a chance of winning this lens. Uh, I'll be shipping anywhere, so you can be anywhere and still get it. I guess today we're having a small crowd, only see 12 people here, still five likes. So all of you, please hit like, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, uh, I would say it's a great idea to subscribe because uh, we're trying to grow this channel and getting new subscribers is a huge part of growing the channel. <laughs> um, this channel runs on blood, sweat and tears. So all of this makes very, very, very little money. And if you want to be a part of it, just join the membership program. The button is on this. Nope. On th this, this side of the screen. There's a join button. You can find different rewards and different tiers of uh, rewards for joining the, the channel. And that definitely helps us grow. If you prefer, you can also send super chats on YouTube, which is only available in the desktop version of the site. So if you're watching this on mobile, you might not find that. And for that, there's paypal.me. If you want to send a donation, this is the best way to help keep this show going. Uh, as you know, I'm doing multiple things besides this channel, like teaching classes and working on freelance projects. And the same goes for Blake. So we want to do this full time and getting you involved is our best shot at it. Um, hello, Ariana. Nice to see you here. <laughs> um, Imrul Khan, best vintage wide 20 mil lens to anamorphic. Um, the Mer 20M is a great call. It's a good sample. It's a, it's a good lens and it's simple enough to open up and modify. The thing with the 20 mil is they're usually not that fast. They're not too weight. So you're going to get very, very tiny bokeh, not just because the aperture is slower but also because it's such a wide angle, it's hard to get any bokeh. So consider that before committing to modding a 20 mil. I think I have a tutorial on the channel already. Hello from Argentina. <laughs> How's it going? Um, okay. Uh, what else? I think this is it memberships. So yeah, we're doing this Pentacon lens. I have another tutorial on modifying it and it's, it's a funny, simple little lens. It comes in M42 mount and it has uh, F2.8. So easy peasy. Okay, I'm gonna start opening this lens and we'll go from there. Um, I don't really remember if I'm supposed to open this from the front or from the back. So I'm gonna start with the front and we'll go figuring out from there. This is a lens wrench if you need tools to open lenses. This is the one to get. It's not helping me though today. Oh, here we go. Progress. Come on. Why did it feel like I tightened it? Isn't this the way to open it? Huh? No, this is it. I can just grip it and twist. I guess not. It's getting stiffer. I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> Let's do a different approach. Uh, I think I'm going to take out this inner ring first because it might be locking our 
ring, the outside ring. So we'll get to that. Hello, Darius, how's it going? Nice to see you here. All right, and yeah, this goes very smoothly, I guess. I always set this camera in a way that my hand blocks the view. That's something to be improved, hey? Definitely. Yeah. And it's because the microphone's on the other side, so I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay. Um, here I am, favoring it better. Okay, so I got the first ring out, and it came with an element. This ring is still not coming. Which makes me a little worried. Like there is a little bit of play, but there's not a lot. And I'm just gonna pour this here. So I know what I'm missing. Okay. Everything jumped out of the lens. There's a spacer, there's another element. Today is just a good day. Uh, this element goes here and this goes here. So this is our structure. And then there's one more. Thing there, but I'm opening it from the front and maybe I should have started from the back. Now that I've committed like to half of this, I'm gonna try the back. Maybe it's a different, different story. Maybe this will be easier. Who knows? Um, I should know. I've done this before, but we'll find out soon enough. Look at that. Perfectly in front of the action. Love the sound effects of this. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, so we took one out. Wow, this is the type of element that I'll be like, which side is up? So there's a little curve. I don't know if this is visible. There's a little curve. The bubble side is up. I'm just keeping this around here as I go. Mm. Yeah, this didn't get me anywhere. No more elements to come out of there. Um, how do I do this now? I see I can take out the mount, but I really didn't want to take out the mount, you know? Always a very tough... Thing to take out the mount and as far as I remember getting this out was the way to go where is it getting stuck maybe I'll have to watch my own tutorial on this yeah it's definitely not that way and definitely not this way either this has a little bit of play. Okay, let's uh, let's do some Googling here. In the meantime, if you guys got questions, this is the perfect time. How to disassemble Pentacon 29. Here we go. All right. Shortest distance, so we're here. Remove the ring front cover. I think this piece comes out without the rest. You know what? It might be one of those days where I'm trying to do something, but it's just impossible. So um, we'll get to nowhere. Let's hang out, answer some questions. Yeah, I guess this is not the way to go, although it really does look like that. Uh, the front retaining ring. This unscrews counterclockwise, yeah. Boom, boom. Can be extremely stiff. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm close to it. According to this tutorial, I'm very close to it, but it says it's very, it can be very stiff, but it's insanely stiff. It's discouraging me to go. 
And also this entire piece should come off somehow, but it's not going. <laughs> you know, Ariana is not right, not wrong. Ariana is right. Jazzy music while I work. I guess that's something for the next one. Just to kill the silence. I'm usually answering 2,000 questions a minute, so this is kind of a first chill version of a, a live stream. I think I'm going to try and take out this mount. Just go from here. Is this spins? The aperture is there, and this is kind of where I need to go. Um, or I can just keep going here through the front. Will this spin? So a big deal is on these lenses, a lot of times the front doesn't spin, so that's good. A lot of times you'll see the aperture spinning, like the blades. From the front, there's none. From the back, you can see them spinning a little bit. This usually means that we want to put our oval insert on the side that does not spin. So uh, is this too black, too contrasty? We see it. We okay. See it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a screw here somewhere that I'm not seeing. Um, but it's funny because I've also disassembled this lens before and I don't remember this being stiff. And I don't remember taking out this mount. So I remember taking out the front part. Uh, I'm going to look up my own tutorial. Anamorphic on a budget. Pentacon. It's going to be great. I'm referring my own tutorial as I try to do something. Now I have to watch my own ads. Oh, the irony. <laughs> Okay, from the time I was bald. Yeah. I am correct. There is a ring there. Okay, yeah, I got it. I mean, unless this ring is glued, so this ID ring here has to come off. Um, and unless this is glued, um, I'm on the right track. So let's try with a little bit more of violence, but it's not going. It's really disappointed in me. Eh. Oh man, this is definitely not going to move. <laughs> okay, so every once in a while, you run into a lens that refuses to work. Uh, this seems to be one of the cases. So we'll either fail at this and not mod this lens, or I'll have to find another way in, which I'm looking at this here, and it could be it. So at the bottom here, there's two more notches to take down another element. Um, so that's what I'm going to try. I do not have a heat gun, but that's definitely something that I should invest on because it would have been useful multiple times. I do have a blow dryer that I could probably run and get it. But let's see if this approach will take us anywhere. So this come off? Not yet. Still has some more unscrewing to go. Uh, LCK. I not sure. Are you very curious? What are your questions? I can I can go over it. I'm actually downsizing and getting rid of a bunch of gear. So my lens collection might be shrinking. Um if you look up my eBay user, oh, there's one last glass element here before the aperture. Okay, yeah. So this failed. This approach did not work. Um, I don't have the thingies to clean this that I should have. 
Um, yeah, I'm downscaling. I'm selling the Siru E50, my whole kit with the diopters and the wide angle adapter, because I'm going to switch for the MFT version. Um, I have the Gellius, the rehoused one by Iron Glasses going up for sale. Uh, my Nucleus Nano is going for sale. My A7S is going for sale. That's a big, big change there. Um, but he can tiny taps. Yep, tiny taps. Like you can probably just wedge it in here and get it out, but that will break the ring because there is a little room. <laughs> I just want to avoid tearing a lens apart on a tutorial and just saying hey now break the lens uh doesn't feel very lens positive i would say ah nope really not not going not going guys why are you not going why are you being so uncooperative pentacon you tell me this is the fun part about modding. You can always get to an obstacle you can't fix. Um, made to last. It's also made to be serviced. Um, I think the main issue here is there's glue on it or the threads are crossed. The threads don't look crossed. Um, what can we do? What are our options here? One of our options is just say, you know what? I'm not going to go to the aperture and place this in a perfect spot. It's actually an interesting tutorial to do, though. Um, if we drop this thing in here, this oval insert, uh, you can see it almost fits when he thinks near the glass. Love it. Um, you can see it almost fits. And maybe that's today's experiment today i'll put this here and see if it works and then we'll discuss the differences between putting the oval insert um at the aperture level versus putting it somewhere else on the lens i can also put it here near this rear element i'm just gonna see where it has the best oh no this one's curved so i would say that's a no i'm gonna close the back of this for now Go in. No, 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 there's only 20 people here, so we can make a, a, a vote. Do you guys want me to take out the mount and see how far we get into disassembling this lens, although it might be irreversible? Or do you guys want me to try different aperture placements so we can look at the differences of that? Um... Let me know in the chat and uh, we'll take it from there. Whoa, 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 is something else spinning here? There is something else spinning. How do I get there? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know how to get there yet. Okay. Um, yeah, let's roll with this. I'm going to paint this black. Let's make a neutral. Um, I do care a little bit about this lens because I want to give it to someone. Uh, so I'm going to paint this a neutral black. And do you guys want flares or do you guys want no flares? Because that's going to decide if we're going to add a streak of fishing line or not. Okay, second option, different placement. That's what we're going to go for. Let's put it somewhere in the middle of the lens and see if we get vignetting or if we get different, some sort of different behavior. Because the idea is you put it um, at the aperture because that's the optimal place for the light to go across. Like the, ap the aperture is where the lines or the, the light rays go through and get shaped. So this is a very interesting uh, positioning for it. And... 
the flares are here. So the ideal placement is there, but if we're not going for it, might as well see what happens, right? And it's a huge piece of fishing line. A tiny insert. All right. Okay, so we got our fishing line here. I'm going to do a little piece of double-sided tape. And this might be enough for both, both of them. Well, one side came off. Perfect. I'll take it. Not exactly what I was planning, but sure. It seems to be the mood of the day. Ah, failed. Okay. This piece is too small. <laughs> is this visible in any of the lenses, any of the cameras, Blake? The, uh, the wire? The, the thing that I'm trying? Yeah, the wire and the... The wire's the a little bit visible. Okay. Fun. Okay. So I'm going to put bigger pieces and then we'll cut them off. So just cut little thin strips of double-sided tape. It doesn't even have to be double-sided tape in this case. Um, it could be electrical tape since it's all black. And add it to hold the flare straight across. And I'm going to cut everything that's left over. I cut this here. Boom. I'm going to cut the leftovers of the tape itself. And here as well. Okay. So we got our tiny disc with a streak. I uh, don't know which camera to go for. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I'm going to drop this in, see how it fits, see if we need to shrink it a little more or not. Boop. <laughs> and I'm not too concerned with alignment in this case yet because we're going to have a rotating adapter. Oh, yeah. I didn't add any collaring to this flare. Because since we're doing an experiment, I want to show the results with uh, transparent flares which basically take on the color of the light source. So that's useful every once in a while, and I wanna, I never showcase it, so today's the day since we're doing everything different, we're doing everything different all the way. It's just not, not going, guys. Okay, sort of there, sort of right in the middle there. I'm gonna start putting back the elements, Hey, Borsu, thank you so much for the coffee funds. We're going to make sure. Yeah, Blake celebrates right there. You're going to make sure to go and enjoy some coffee after this because it's rough today, man. <laughs> um, you guys can follow Borsu's example and send us some coffee funds or some... Um, what is it called? Blood, Sweat, and Tears Fund. Just to help us out in making this show happen. My element has fallen very skewed. And it does not want to go in the right place. I'm now wondering if the oval is in its spot. But nope, maybe I was just, that was just, yep, here we go. We got them. There's a little bit of adjusting here and there. I think I got it now. So we're screwing this here. And look at that. Boom. Lower. Lower. Yeah. Yeah. So we have our oval insert in there. You can see it's a little bent, but it's definitely locked into place. I can shake this all I want. It's not going to move. I'm going to fit back the rest of the lens. Um, since everything is kind of haphazard, I guess I'm going to have to re-clean this and all that. So I'm just doing it. 
the easy way now. I'll do it better after. I just want to see how this is going to play out. So here we go. We got our elements back in the right order. And our lens wrench. I'm going to screw this back into position. I think. Maybe. All right, it is going. So the aperture now looks way smaller than it did before. Um, and the lens focuses and you can still close it up and open. I'm gonna add this rotating M42 adapter to it, which is probably my favorite finding on eBay for the longest time. Like I've used this for everything, for M42 lenses, for converting the projector lens the other day. I'm just gonna add this here and see how it's aligned. It's not well aligned. And it's time to take down the GH5 in favor of the S5. And we're gonna see how this goes. Um, I'm probably gonna disappear for a second. while I dip out of one place into the other frame. Replacing some cables. Uh, what do I need? This HDMI cable here. Boom. One. Part one. Part two is going to be swapping it out on the box. So this is the part where I disappear. Goodbye. Yeah, nope. It's this one. Goodbye. And goodbye. Or hello. And I think all of the UI is going to show, right? Let me know. Uh, yeah. Change settings. So I'm going to change this to 29 and change that. Okay, I guess we can have the UI. I'm just going to figure here to disable it. Um, uh, Alejandro is asking about the 20 mil flecto. I've never tried it. Uh, if it's as complicated and stiff as this one, it might not work out very well. Uh, <laughs> although traditionally they're not this complicated info display off. Okay, is it clear now? Uh, I just, it's just black. Okay, now it's just white. Yes. Sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna mount this lens here. Boom. And uh, wow, it's very flary. Oh, oh I know why it's flary. So this is the streak flare. Uh, ISO is way too high. Let's dial this down to this. And so yeah, it's flare because of the streak flare. So that's a thing that we just learned. It doesn't play well with diffused lights. This is our lighting. That's my phone right there. And we also know that the flares are going the wrong direction. So if we look, into the lens, you'll see that this whole thing is facing the wrong direction. <laughs> right? Uh, the oval is going that way when it should be going this way. Uh, let me bring it closer. Does this help? Uh, Not much? Focusing. Oh, okay. Good stuff. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just redo it here. So the oval is going in the wrong direction and we got a tweak for that. The way I find it easier to do is there's a notch on the EF mount. And the easiest way is to align the oval perpendicular to this notch. So as you can see, everything is kind of going in the same line. We want it to go the opposite, not the opposite, but 90 degrees. So in this adapter, you can loosen these three tiny screws here. And it's going to give you rotation freedom while not coming off. So I'm going to look here and try to put this. Is this facing up? What is up on this lens? Yeah, this is up enough. So I kind of made it perpendicular there. And I'm just going to tighten the screws. If I want to be lazy and just check out first, I can tighten one screw and then do the others if this one worked. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm tightening one screw and putting it back on the camera. Okay, so we got rid of the crazy flare. That's a thing. As soon as I put that lens, that light in the frame, boom, flare. And you can see that this is a white flare, while these are warm flares. Theoretically, these lights are the same color temperature, so God knows what's happening there. Um, but the fun thing is, if we, let's focus on, let's pick an interesting subject here. What do I have that's interesting? There we go. The flash. We're going to have to pay royalty to Marvel now. Uh, let's see what happens if I focus on the flash. Am I focused on the flash already? Almost. Whoops. So I'm focused on the flash. And you can see there's a lot of oval highlights here, 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 here. All of my bookmarks have become ovals. All of the white dots have become ovals. Although they do not look very clean. Uh, this might be because of the positioning of the oval, or it might just be a performance issue on this lens. Um, let me see if I can magnify something here. Yeah. They, you can also, like the line of the streak flare is fainter, which is an interesting thing to notice. Um, <laughs> Edward is saying, who says this the wrong way? Um, if you try that, people will tell you that's the wrong way. And my favorite thing about these mods is they are non-destructible, so you can easily take out the aperture insert, and you can also stop down your lens as much as you want. So this increases contrast by a lot, uh, makes the whole thing easier but it does not get rid of the flares. So if you want, you still want flares, you can still stop down the lens and you'll get flares. You get different types, like they are, now I got rid of it, but as soon as I open it, you see that the flare keeps getting longer and longer and longer. <laughs> okay, so do you see how the flare is not taking the whole width of the frame? I would bet this is because the insert is not at the aperture placement. Like the aperture is behind it, so it's kind of cutting off the flare as it shrinks. Uh, if we open it all the way, it goes on forever. Here's our C stand. Right focusing to the C stand there. And yeah, maybe. This flash needs to go a little higher here. Let's put the flash on a taller box so I can get the keyboard highlights in the background. Yeah. So here we go. Flash and keyboard. You can see the nice ovals in there. You can also see that this lens is crazy wide on full frame. Uh, which I think is a pretty nice thing. I, it's definitely something I miss from the Gellius mods, is how tight they feel. Um, and we still have sharpness. Like you can still see all the detail there. This is the lens wide open um, with the insert and you can see all of the detail. So, it's not a bad lens. A lot of people say this lens is crazy soft. I wouldn't say it's soft, but it's definitely got some blooming that you can flag off. See there? Yeah. And that's an easy task for either a lens hood or a flag. Um, so I guess the takeaway here is even if your lens gets stuck, you can still try to mod it and working situation um, if you don't get the aperture placement that's not ideal but it still works will this stay of course not this will stay oh, whoop, it won't uh it's not ideal but it does work and the flares are there um 
I don't know. Okay. It's blooming more from veiling flare. Yes, yes, James is correct. It's blooming from the veiling flare. So it's something from the lens itself and not something that I introduced. So for that, you can use a little flag. I think I made a tutorial on that or no, I just talked about how I made some. Um, maybe it'll be a tutorial at some point. Um, and it's a flag that's made out of helping hands for soldering irons or just like soldering in general. <laughs> And it has a piece of cine foil or black wrap at the tip. And you can just shape it and position it to block veiling flare on your rig the best way you can. Um, and that helped a lot during the, the shoot of the feature because of the contacts also have a crazy amount of veiling flare. And we needed to keep that under control. Edward has become a member. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining our team. You're going to hopefully enjoy all of the stuff that we do for members. Uh, Blake and I are actually going to discuss new things for members um, as we're getting uh, a little burnt out from all of the work that this takes. Uh, <laughs> so uh, joining the membership program is a great way to push this channel forward and help us create meaningful content. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Edward. It's awesome. You're awesome. Um, I think I covered everything, uh, all of the bases here. I sell these little inserts. There's one shaped just for the Pentacon 29. As you can see, this one worked uh, both not at the aperture level as well as at the aperture level. And uh, I sell inserts for many lenses. There's links for them on eBay. You can also get them at my shop where you can get the Anamorphe kit guide. Uh, let me post the link to that. And you can use the discount code for 20% off on the Anamorphe kit guide during this week. So shop. This is the shop and this is the discount for the Anamorphe kit guide. that teaches how to modify not only this lens, but a full set of Russian primes, the MIR-20 that people are asking, a 20 mil, MIR-10A, which is a 28 mil, and it's it's got more character than this Pentacon, although it is two-thirds of a stop slower. It's a 3.5 lens. Um, the MIR-1B, the Gallia is 44, Jupiter 9 and Tire 11A. All of those are covered in the guide as well as a full set of Rokinons or Samyangs from 14 all the way to 135. It's six lens set uh, that helps you create this anamorphic look without the need of buying an anamorphic lens or an anamorphic adapter. Those are way, way cheaper than like the full set of, Rok of Rokinons and Samyangs costs half of what a Koa B and Age or 8Z costs on eBay these days. So it's a good um, uh, investment if you don't want to commit all of the time it takes to get the experience and the hassle of shooting in scope. Um, if you guys got any questions, please shoot them in the chat. Otherwise, I guess we'll be wrapping a few minutes early today. And I'm glad we managed to still mod the lens and show the results, even without being able to disassemble it fully. If you want the full tutorial, you can just check the previous videos in the channel. There's a playlist on Anamore Faking and the Pentacon 29 tutorial is there. It's got a lot of sped up sections, so this is, you watching me do this in like real time and uh, it's not as easy as it looks even when it gets stuck you can still figure out a way to make it work um i now gotta reopen this lens and clean the elements just to get rid of that extra finger grease and make sure everything is properly aligned but that's it for today i guess uh, stay tuned for next week. There's a video coming up on Monday and another live stream on Wednesday. Uh, 
yeah, I guess that's it. If you want to take a the last thing is this lens is going to be part of a giveaway. So if you want to be a part of that, check out my Instagram. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. It's also here on the chat. I posted it earlier, but if you're not, if you weren't here before, you can get it now. Oops, I missed a letter. Instagram.com. But there you go. So you can go there and the giveaway starts tomorrow and you can get this lens for free. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon. Thank you guys. See ya. <laughs> Blake says goodbye. <laughs>